The story begins in a Seoul special city where a VR online game called Legend World has been released. Despite the monthly account cost exceeding 30 million won, due to providing rental of expensive equipment necessary for virtual reality experiences, it gained explosive popularity worldwide. The game's immense popularity led to the rise of the dark gamers, who make a living through questing and selling in-game items, as a prominent profession. Exactly, just like our story protagonist. He's Yek, a level 131 player mad berserker. He's a human race with the title Warrior of Madness. His total crude royal achievement point is 4,200. His reputation point is 1,020. The max amount of his health is 13,350 while his mana point is 650. His strength is 371 and he gained 130 additional. His health is 161 and he gained 50 additional. His stamina is 250 in addition of 20 points. His wisdom is 36 and he has 1 point in intelligence. As he entered the game, he held a paper and screamed in excitement knowing that he had finally found the quest item. He hugged the paper while saying that he searched for this question item for 2 months, surviving on instant noodles. He clenched his fist while holding the paper and happily said that he would buy rice right away once he got the reward item. He also needs to pay his monthly rent. This time, he wondered how much the reward item would be worth in a trade. Meanwhile, Yak is done with the quest. He looks so tired and is facing the NPC who will give the reward to him. All of a sudden, he gained 100 fame, 5 points wisdom, and his level increased. He also obtained the title Pursuer of Magical Armaments. His level also increased once more multiple times. A chain quest also appeared on his system and to do the quest, he needed to go find NPC pants. The NPC with him at the same time gave him boots which is his reward for completing a quest a while ago. He was just looking at the item so the NPC asked him if he didn't want to take it. Yak then immediately grabbed it and his system appeared, informing him of the information about the boots. It is called Savage Wings, also known as the Ruler of the Sky. It's a leather boots made from the skin of a white wyvern. It's a footwear type, a rare item with 500 durability and 25 defense and its option is triple jump height. The user will also gain 5% additional speed once used and this item can be equipped at level 50 or higher. Even if he lists this item on item trade, he knows that he will only get 1 million won or about $850. He wasn't happy with the reward knowing that he had given all his efforts for 2 months. In addition, after paying the overdue rent and account fees, there will only be 200,000 won left for him. He went behind the NPC and suddenly grabbed his shirt while telling him that he should have said from the beginning that this was the quest reward. Don't you know that hidden quests have random rewards? The NPC asked, and Yak was speechless since the NPC was right. He was trembling in anger while the NPC reminded him about what would happen to the player who would touch an NPC. Numerous guards then came to imprison Yak for touching NPC. Yak sighed at the fact that he got so frustrated about living expenses that he completely forgot this was all in the game. In the end, he was sentenced for 60 minutes for assaulting an NPC. He relaxed himself in the jail to wait for an hour. He decided to remove his VR equipment and grabbed his tumbler. He drank some water and decided to check the current market price of the Savage Wings. He opened the item trade and searched for the Savage Wings. He found someone willing to buy this item with the amount of 1,200,001 and he was glad that the price rose this time. He had nothing to do besides managing inventory so he decided to trade it right away. He was also thinking of doing manual hunting as he concluded that even if he gathered and sold miscellaneous items, he might earn around 1.5 million won per month which is not bad for his monthly expenses. While staring at his account, he was surprised to see a familiar item. It's the Gigant's Crescent or the Chornote's Crest which can be sold for around 300 million won. This item is the ancient magic weapon crescent that exhibits delicate yet sharp attacks, much like its finely crafted body. Especially on nights with a crescent moon, it boasts unparalleled power that can withstand a temporal test. This magical weapon's grade is soul and its level is 200. It deals with 2,150 attacks and 5,000 defenses, and its durability max is 80,000. As per Yak, it's a pet with a soul grade higher than unique. He also concludes that selling a pet for 300 million won is quite something, even though it's just a virtual item. At this moment, his system informed him that the 60-minute sentence was finally done. He then wore his equipment to enter the game again. He directly went to a blacksmith named Pants, and Pants asked him if he had completed the quest item. But then, Yak didn't want to discuss it since he was annoyed with the item he received. He used to like hidden quests, but now, he was disappointed that NPC is giving out shabby items as a reward after the completion. He was asking Pants to repair his armor. Pants then said that his armor could be repaired quickly but the cost might be quite high. Yak then confidently replied that he would handle the payment properly as long as Pants could repair it and increase the maximum durability of his armor. By the way, you know that I have to receive a chain quest from you, right? He asked, but seems like Pants wasn't informed about it at all. The system of Yak then popped up to notify about the chain quest again. He admitted that he was so frustrated with NPC Teddy a while ago that he quickly skipped the chain quest. Pants lifts up Yak's weapon while saying that he is an oracle who has always been very interested in ancient weapons, said to have been created during the era of magic civilization, especially the golem. 
according to him. The entire kingdom is focused on creating this golem right now, and if Yak would bring him the key components needed to create this golem, he would reward Yak accordingly. After the information given by Pants, a notification then shows to activate the quest given. With this quest, Yak received an additional restriction which is the item purchased and repair costs increased threefold until completion. As for the corresponding reward, I'm not trying to give something as measly as 100 gold like Teddy, okay? Yak said, It's not like I would know. All I can say is that it's an item corresponding to it. Pants replied. Yak then asks him about the item's appearance and Pants shows his pinky finger, stating that it's roughly about the size of his pinky finger. Yak was shocked and then asked about the item's whereabouts and he sighed when he heard Pants answer that it would be found somewhere in the Dalant Castle. Anyway, if you bring it, I'll give you a big reward. If you're lucky, you'll find it soon. Pants added. Yak then comes out from the shop of Pants and opens the system to check the quest. The system says that this main quest is a mandatory quest and Yak can continue other in-game activities while progressing through it. The difficulty and the reward are still unknown. He was staring at the castle wondering if he would be able to complete the quest in less than two months. Meanwhile, Yak arrives at the Dallin Castle. He enters the gate despite the fact that he believes that searching for something small in this castle is quite daunting. The guards permitted him to go inside and as he walked inside, he was scratching his head as he was still clueless about how he would start searching for the small thing that Pants wanted him to find. He even asked a shoe polisher about the item but the polisher replied that he had only seen shoe polish before which is the same as how Yak described the object he was searching. He also went to some vendors and asked but most of them didn't know what object Yak was trying to find. After a few minutes of asking people, he decided to also ask one of the castle guards but the guard was also clueless. The guard even asked him if he was a resident of the city since outsiders need to report their entry at the government office. Kids nearby overheard Yak searching for the item and they knew that item was the item Pants asked for. And the lady mentioned a story about the heart of the legendary weapon. The kids were gossiping behind the store of an NPC old man witch and he said that if it was Pants who requested to search this item, it must be something significant. Do you know where it is? Any possible locations? Yak asked, hoping that he could now get an answer. As per the old man, he doesn't know where the item is exactly, but he believes that if Yak crosses the north gate, he could find a stream called the Wounded Fairy's Book. According to him, there's a rumor that valuable items are piled up there. Yak was thrilled knowing that he now finally got an answer. He was giving thanks to the old man but the old man feels awkward with his behavior of excitement. To further help Yak, the old man also decided to mark the location on the map so Yak could check it out. Yak bowed to him and gave thanks multiple times and the old man then sensed that Yak seemed to have a cheerful personality. Yak at this moment clenched his fist while telling himself that this quest shouldn't take months like his previous quest. He even swore that he would quit Dark Gamer if this quest would drag on for a few more months again. He immediately heads to the North Gate boundary, but unfortunately, the guards won't let him in. They said that it's forbidden to venture into the Northern Zone without a party due to its danger. I've tried hunting there before. Just send me there, please. Yak replied. Still, the guards won't allow him to enter and even scare him that he will be imprisoned if he forces them. Yak was annoyed but he didn't beg more. Instead, he turned around, waving goodbye to the guards and the guards then reminded him to report his entry at the government office since he is an outsider. Yak is still near the gate and draws his strategy on the ground. But then, in the end, he decided to wait until the guards finish their shift. He logs out of the game as he feels tired. He opens drinks while thinking of completing the quests as quickly as possible as he believes that this quest given by Pants isn't assigned only to him. He then checked on his PC as he wondered if there was a strategy guide for this quest somewhere. Unfortunately, he didn't find anything. He tried to search for more minutes but still, there was absolutely no information. Because of this, he concludes that the quest might assign only to him. And if it's really true, then he believes that he must be in the first place or he's the only one who can receive the reward items. He also deduces that he might turn his life around if he will do well on this quest. He then went back into the game, climbed the tower, and silently uttered that he would complete the quest as quickly as possible no matter what happened as he really believed that he was in first place. He successfully climbed the tower of the border and sneaked to pass through. But then, as he jumped, the guard saw his existence and immediately chased him. Yak then jumped but he was too unlucky since more guards were on the ground and saw him instantly. Yak then ran as fast as he could while the guards chased him to imprison him. The guard is whistling to make him stop but Yak doesn't listen at all and even manages to hide on the tree. He was so eager not to get captured and he even wanted to die than be captured this time. The guards was still searching for him while Yak was staring at them, questioning why these NPCs were so persistent. When the guards search in the other direction, Yak jumps down and cleans his hands while saying that he barely shook the guards off. After a few more minutes, he arrived at the Dallin Castle Northern Zone, the Wounded Fairy's Book. As he walked into the forest, he saw a sign of a repeat quest. It is said that this place is where greedy fairies store stolen items from people. These fairies, with their wings torn as a result of incurring the wrath of the gods, reside here. In addition, if the players hunt down 30 of these fairies along this brook, the player will receive a reward as usual. 
This sign was written by the captain of Dallin Guards. Yak then summoned his weapon as he guessed he would comb through this area while doing this repeat quest. Yak didn't waste time and immediately hunted down fairies. There were also fairies coming from the underground and almost grabbed Yak's foot. Yak was startled the moment he saw a lot of fairies coming out together. Still, he bravely attacked them and obtained rewards every time he killed a fairy. He got a torn tooth of the wounded, a forgotten knight's helmet, and the ruby necklace of the nobleman. How much have they stolen from people? Yak uttered while fighting. Yak managed to kill all the fairies coming his way but it took him overnight. He was panting heavily as he felt tired after killing numerous fairies. The corpses of the fairies are just behind him. It's a lot and the moment he opened his inventory, he was surprised to see that it was already full. But then, most of these items are useless so he ended up throwing them away aside from the small item that is very unfamiliar to him. According to the system, this item is an unidentified heart and it is a quest reward item that is non-transferable. At this moment, he remembers the kids on the Dallant Castle mentioning the story of the heart of a legendary weapon. Yak was so thrilled and jumped in excitement thinking that it was the item Pants was looking for. Back then, he didn't know. From now on, the parenting diary will begin. Yak's name in the real world is Seo Yeon Woo. He made his own parenting diary and said there that he was happy when he got the heart not until he gave the heart to Pants. After handing the heart to Pants, the joy turned into emptiness. He scratches his head while saying that he didn't know at that time he got that heart whether it was a jackpot or not. After he got the heart in the northern zone, he immediately went to the store of Pants but got annoyed while staring at Pants checking the item. He tapped his finger on the table to make a noise but Pants still ignored his existence. Until when will you just keep watching like this? He asked angrily since it's already been an hour. Pants was startled and Yak then told him that he could mark the quest as complete and provide a different reward if he still didn't know what to do about the item. Ah, the young nobleman is in a hurry, Pants casually replied. According to him, this heart is something even modern technology can't understand right now. He also added that it must be an item created with ancient magic. If you've seen such an item, isn't it natural to share your impressions? He asked. What? So you're saying that it's not something you researched, but simply an impression you had? Yak asked while trembling in anger. Pants pinched the heart while saying that Yak didn't have any idea about this item. Pants then normally replied yes and added that he really had no idea about the item's details. As per Pants, this item is an object beyond their common understanding. Pants throws the heart on the flame which rattles Yak and asks him what he is doing. A combination of ancient magical techniques and metallurgical skills, Velikikavak. According to the document, Velikikavak that is being circulated among their blacksmiths, this item only reveals its true value within flames, Pants stated. Yak was still annoyed and said that he didn't know what Pants was saying. What's more important for him now is for Pants to take the heart away from the flame. With his behavior, Pants then said that Yak was too impatient. He was holding his tool and put it to the fire to get an item. It was a cube and this will be given to Yak as a reward. Pants then told Yak to touch it as it wasn't hot at all after removing it from the flame. Yak followed Pants without any hesitation and he was amazed to feel the coldiness of the cube. He then said that someone might give Pants magic props to perform a magic show in front of people. The system then shows that this item is a quest reward item called an unidentified opaque cube. Pants was thrilled while stating that this item now belongs to Yak. Yak feels awkward with the smile of Pants so he told Pants to stop smiling. He then opened the door as he decided to leave. Pants waved goodbye to him and Yak then went immediately to the forest. He put the item on the ground and tapped it, wondering what he would do with this item. Since he was too clueless, he was thinking of going back to Pants again to ask the blacksmith. He also logged out to check on the website but no search result at all. He then grabbed the cube while saying that this item might only be a random item. He was disappointed knowing that he could not even sell the item as it was a bound item. All of a sudden, the cube suddenly floats above Yak's hand and creates a red strong light. The cub moves on its own which makes Yak believe that something is working out. There was also a lightning strike and this surrounded the area where Yak was standing. A monster then started appearing which surprised Yak. This monster was a tiny one and was standing in front of Yak. Yak was speechless and questioned what this thing was in front of him. He sat down on the ground, holding his head, and was disappointed as he concluded that this tiny little monster was just a useless random reward. The tiny monster was jumping in front of him but he stopped it by holding its head. The moment he did it, the monster was thrilled and stared at him. The system then popped up, stating that as the being that had been asleep within the mysterious cube for a long time recognizes Yak as its owner, the cube opens. The system then declares that Yak has become the owner of the Kronoth's Dark, the ancient magical weapon. Yak was so happy after knowing that it was a Kronoth's as he remembers that Kronoth's crest that can be sold for 300 million won. He then carried the Kronoth's Dark and spun around out of excitement knowing that he ended up hitting the jackpot. He then paused as he wondered what the price of the Kronoth's Dark if the Kronoth's crest is 300 million won. He then checked the system and according to the system, everything is hidden within the darkness just as its name suggests. In its current state, it seems difficult to expect anything. This item is just a normal grade level and its dense, attack, durability, abilities, and special notes are still unknown. 
In addition, this item is bound sale and non-transferable. Yak's excitement disappeared as he now thought that this item was currently useless and couldn't be sold or traded. For him, it's basically an item with no value at the moment and even if he sends an inquiry email to the Legend World management team, he believes that they probably won't respond. While he was thinking, a rabbit appeared which caught the Chronon's Dark's attention since he knew that they were notorious for not responding unless it was about bugs or account-related inquiries. The Chronon's Dark jumped toward the rabbit which startles Yak. The rabbit got scared and immediately ran away. Yak let the Kronov's Dark chase the rabbit and at the same time, he thinks that even though it has the name Kronov's, it must have some use. Because of his conclusion, he ended up planning to level up the Kronov's Dark for now. He then went to the Forest of Verdant Undergrowth, the level 20 hunting ground. This ground has a lot of monsters around doing their stuff but they were distracted the moment they heard a lightning sound. As expected, it was the Kronov's Dark together with Yak. Yak then ordered his pet to attack the monsters and the Kronon's Dark then charged to the monsters without any fear. The moment Kronon's Dark activates its power, the other monsters nearby see the strikes and are alarmed by it. At the same time, Yak was impressed to see a quite significant momentum of his pet. He slightly smiled and told himself that he would make sure the nickname Kronon's would get enough recognition. While the Kronon's Dark charges to the monsters, Yak was also cheering it. The blue wolf glanced at the Kronos Dark and immediately informed his opponents that they had uninvited guests. The other monsters then glanced at the Kronos Dark. Because of the power that the Kronos Dark had, the blue wolf feels a little bit nervous. The Kronos Dark was able to punch the wolf in the face and after it, Yak received a notification, informing him that his Kronos Dark acquired a body slam. He then notes in his parenting diary that his feelings have become strange. At this moment, the monsters were shocked after seeing the strength of the Kronos Dark. The Kronos Dark's Dark kicked the leg of the blue wolf. But this time, the blue wolf stood and possessed a scary aura that trembled the Kronos Dark. The blue wolf swung its leg and strongly kicked the Kronos Dark. The Kronos Dark flew away but immediately went back to the monsters. Unfortunately, the monsters hit the Kronos Dark and Yak then told them all to stop. Yak had gone mad and the monsters all screamed the moment Yak interfered. After defeating the three monsters, Yak then carried his Kronos Dark and asked it if it was fine after being beaten up. While carrying it, he feels that it seems quite heavy. The Kronos Dark responded to Yak using its own words with a wide smile but Yak could not say if his pet's answer was yes or if it was still in pain or just sleepy. He then realizes that no matter how great Kronos is, the fact that it's still level 1 now so there's no possibility for it to defeat a level 20 dungeon. The Kronos Dark was snoring while Yak decided to go to a lightly easier hunting ground instead of staying in the level 20. He immediately went to the level 15 earth hunting ground but still, his pet was beaten up once again. He went to the level 10 gentle pain water buffalo hunting ground but his pet was easily defeated by the buffalo alone. Then he next went to the level 5 rotation fox hunting ground but still no chance of winning which annoys Yak. In the end, he faced reality and went back to the level 1 yoka prairie rabbit hunting ground. Unfortunately, the Kronos Dark was still beaten up by the three rabbits causing Yak to be disappointed and angrily question his pet about what he should do if his pet cannot even hunt level 1 monsters alone. Yak cannot believe that he seems like become a bad adult yelling at a baby because of his Kronos Dark. He was stomping his feet on the ground, venting his anger while stating that the Kronos Dark isn't useful at all. I'm really going crazy, he uttered while staring at his pet lying on the grass. He lay down on the ground while still questioning what he will do with this Kronos Dark knowing that it can't even discard or be sold. In addition, there is also no information about how to handle or grow the Kronos Dark in the community either. He covered his eyes and he sighed. He then opened the system and decided to put the Kronos Dark back into his inventory believing that there might be some strategies soon, whether it's growth methods or utilization methods. He gets up as he realizes that he has been unable to earn money for a while even though he did quests so he plans to go hunting for now. After a few minutes, he arrived at the level 150 Rebels Territory Tote Rebellion Knights Hunting Ground. The knights were busy talking without knowing that someone had sneaked into their territory. All right, I've arrived. Let's try to earn some money, Yak uttered while cracking his wrist. He then jumped down from the cliff and the moment he landed on the ground, the knights then shouted that there was an intruder. The archer knight then rang the bell to alert everyone and all the knights then instantly charged to Yak, holding their different kinds of weapons. Yak remained calm and summoned his sword. The notification appeared, stating that the Mark of the Bloodline skill was being cast. The effect duration of this skill is 30 seconds and it will add 30% of Yak's attack speed and 20% of his movement speed. On the contrary, he will be deducted 5% every 10 seconds. All right, shall we begin? Yak uttered then charged to the knight alone by himself. He screamed so loud while heading to all the knights and attacked them one by one. The knights attacked all together but Yak managed to fight back easily. In the end, he defeated all the rebellion knights and obtained 42 tokens of rebellion. It's the token of the defeat of the rebels. Yak can get a small reward if he takes this certificate to Sung as per the system. He also obtained 35 of the rebels bundle unconfirmed. If the package, which was owned by the rebels, is opened, it can win various trophies that the rebels have collected. Yak can never check what's inside until it's opened. 
All of these rewards are enough for Yaks to earn a day's wages. For now, he decides to go back to the village and clean the inventory before the mobs are spawned. As he arrived at the village, he saw some people busy with their own stuff. He went to a store and observed the people outside before coming in. It's definitely a big city, right? It's noisy even at night, he uttered. He was currently at the variety store and immediately showed the owner some of the stuff that he farmed a while ago. The owner then checked the items and gave Yak three bags to put them inside. Yak asked for more bags as he still had a lot to dispose of. The store owner was surprised after seeing a rebel's token from Yak. Yak opened his inventory and disposed of all of his useless stuff. The store owner was excited after seeing that most of the items of Yak are japtum and gems. Yak's eyes sparkled as he thought that he would be paid a large amount but then, the owner only paid him 5 gold for all of his stuff. Oh, I've been hunting while eating and sleeping in the rebels' living quarters for a few days, so please give me a little more. Yak angrily said which startled the store owner. He then informed Yak that there are a lot of japtums related to the rebels in the fortress so the supply is full and overflowing. Yak was shocked and asked about why there were so many items dropped by level 150 monsters. The store owner then claims that Yak didn't know anything. He pointed to the tarp behind him. It's about the search for a soldier to kill the tote rebels and royal rewards will based on performance. The store vendor explains that because of this fort, soldiers are going to find out the tote rebels who are scattered all over the place. He grabbed the token of rebellion while saying that things like this are now overflowing in the market. Yak didn't respond at all but he opened the door to go out of the store while thinking about the royal bounty. He then concludes that the gold he got from the store owner in exchange for all his stuff is a royal reward. If it's a royal reward, he believes that gold is pretty good, and also, he can earn achievements so he can possibly get additional quests. He wondered if he would be better off doing the quest but he guessed he didn't have a choice either. After selling his stuff, he went to the royal tent and asked the royal knight to allow him to participate in the tote rebel subjugation operation. Yak shows his eagerness and promises to give his best. The knight then handed him a cloak while telling him that he was now hired as a mercenary for the royal knights. This cloak will be a mark that he belongs to the mercenary. Yak accepted the cloak and immediately wore it. Our royal knights, fight for the honor of the kingdom including the talent castle. Scram and fight. I commend you for your courage. The royal knight stated, The tote rebel knight's camp is very peaceful without sensing that Yak is above their territory, stating that he can set up a temporary camp here. He was currently standing in his tent and was excited to see that he has now a bad to rest and a simple warehouse where he could organize Japtum from time to time. He also had a cooking facility where he could get food buffs. Nice. Shall we start slowly now? He uttered. He didn't waste his time during day one. Day two is also the same, and even his day three in the camp. He loots lots of items from the tote rebels, and after fighting for three days, he rests and believes that this one big sack of items might be enough money for him. Yak then opened his system to put the Japtums in the warehouse. His current level is now 135 but he feels something weird. He hunted so hard but his level only raised a little. The rebel knights of the tote are an advanced hunting ground for him, and after a few days of Daxa, the experience is the lowest which he cannot believe. He was screaming in anger and disappointment. While checking the system, he saw his pet. He ordered it to stand and his pet was summoned. Then he was surprised upon seeing that his Kronon's Dark is now level 15. He was so confused at first since his pet was just in his inventory. Then he instantly realizes that the experience he farmed is shared even if his pet was just inside his inventory. He becomes disappointed once more as he believes that the experience points are wasted in the end. While complaining, his pet suddenly held his leg. He then looked at his pet and saw his pet's eyes sparkle. Yak felt touched as it was too cute for him but he wanted himself to be hard to his Kronos dark. At this time, the wolves are howling in the middle of the night. The bonfire outside Yak's tent was still lit up since it was the only one that gave light inside Yak's camp. The Kronos dark opened the sack of Yak and searched for something. At the same time, Yak still cannot figure out where his pet is being used. He knows that this Kronos dark cannot help looting from the mobs and can't even perform basic pet functions, but Yak cannot just throw it away. The Kronos Dark was sparring using a stick but ended up skunked on the ground. He searched for more items from the sack and decided to dive inside. Yak allows his pet to do what it wants but he believes that his pet cannot find a useful item. Surprisingly, after a few seconds, his pet lifts a shield and the system then notifies that the Kronos Dark obtained a tote small shield from the rebels. Yak awkwardly smiles as he knows that he won't get a penny even if he sells this item. The Kronos Dark positioned himself like he was fighting and Yak then said that his pet looks like a Spartan warrior. While his pet was practicing fighting, Yak lay down on his bed while telling his pet to do what he wanted. It is even more better for him if this Kronon's Dark will escape and become independent. The next day, Yak woke up and opened the map, thinking of where he would be heading this time. He has used the forward base and the mountain chalet once so his next destination is the command center. He believes that the rebel leader Maximos should be at the command center now. He concludes he won't be able to deal proper damage and he'll be killed if he goes there with his current level. But if he kept killing the mobs in the mountain chalet and the forward base, he was sure that it wouldn't be helpful for his progress. He was eager to hunt Maximos instead of just attracting its aggression. While thinking of strategies, his pet suddenly held him from behind. 
What's wrong? Didn't you run away? Yak asked. He then decided to put his chronos dark to his inventory as he had come quest to complete. He arrived at the camp of Maximos and in recommended hunting level in this ground is level 155. Yak believes that the mobs in this ground are manageable even at level 50 as their health is low enough to hunt. But the boss has a recommended level of 155 and a massive amount of health. Yak told himself to be cautious until their level rises to a certain extent. He continued to enter the camp silently but one knight instantly saw him. Yak then summoned a dagger while the knight charged at him. He then throws the dagger to the knight and deals a critical hit which kills the knight in an instant. Yak knows that he should silently assassinate without attracting aggro. He kills a few more knights and realizes that assassination adds critical damage. After half an hour, Maximos came out from his tent and shouted to command to bring him alcohol and meat. But then, he was puzzled as he didn't get any response at all. This time, he senses something suspicious. He then walked to check the tents. He instantly senses Yak's existence and immediately swings his sword to strike an attack on the tent in front of him while asking who the hell is the intruder. The tent where Yak was hiding has been destroyed so Yak's appearance is completely seen by Maximos. You, who are you? Maximos asked. He commanded Yak to reveal his identity but Yak didn't respond at all. He was annoyed by the fact that he was caught despite that he was trying to leave quietly without causing any trouble. Because of the cloak he was wearing, Maximos found out that Yak was a mercenary from the Royal Knights of Dalant Castle. Yak then prepared his sword since he knew that he didn't have any choice but to fight back. There's a level difference and a massive amount of health, but there are no other mobs so he believes that if he can learn the patterns and dodge well, there's a chance for him to win. If this goes wrong, he plans to run away knowing that the mobs won't chase him if he escapes. The clash has been started and the moment their swords collided, Yak confirmed the big difference in terms of strength. He grits his teeth while fighting as he feels how strong Maximos is. Maximos kicked him on his abdomen causing him to fly away and strongly slammed on the ground. He vomits blood but Maximos isn't satisfied yet and strikes an attack. This attack was too strong so the knights nearby were alarmed with it and immediately gathered at the command center. They surrounded the command center and upper mountain chalet then they deployed archers. Up until this point, Yak was still alive but the ground where he was standing has been crumbled. It's just a truck full of dead players in front of me. They dare to attack me when they haven't even reached level 140 yet. Maximos uttered. Yak this time admitted to himself that he must have underestimated the rebel knights. Surprisingly, the lightning power of his pet suddenly appeared and his pet was summoned instantly. Yak was surprised and his system then informed him that the Chronod's dark special ability of finding and saving the owner was being activated. His pet bravely stood, facing Maximos with just only its shield. Yak rattled thinking that his pet would try to do this time. The rebel knights at the same time ran as fast as they could to assist their captain Maximos. The archers hid on the rock and prepared their bows. All the rebel knights are already in their positions without Yak knowing about it. The Kronos dark's eyes sparkled and its full power activated. Yak was shocked upon seeing it. The Kronos dark clenched his fist while staring at Maximos. Maximos was confused since the Kronos dark wasn't familiar to him. What is this cute pet? He asked. He sees himself as a strong wolf while the Kronos dark is just a small cat. Yak was hopeless as he already expected that his pet would surely be defeated by Maximos. The Kronos dark roaring so Maximos concludes that this pet of Yak is provoking him. Yak got scared at this moment while Maximos charged at his pet. He felt nervous seeing the current situation. Maximos tried to attack the Kronos dark but his attack was blocked. The Kronos dark is pushing the shield with its full strength. He even tried his best not to slip away. Maximos was shocked by the fact that the little pet of Yak was able to block his attack. Yak himself was speechless after seeing his Kronon's dark block Maximo's attack using the shield he thought was a useless one. Maximo's raises his sword and casts another power. He swung it, believing that the Kronos dark could not block it anymore. A strong explosion then happens and Yak clearly sees his pet still blocked Maximo's sword. Now, he uttered that his pet is playing the role of a tank. He then sees the opportunity to charge at Maximo's and Maximo's wasn't aware since Yak was just behind trying to deal a backshot critical attack. He then swung his sword and hit Maximos. Maximos moaned in pain and Yak's attack had also made an explosion causing Maximos to be almost defeated. Good job. This is amazing. Yak uttered while staring at his pet who is also impressed with their combination. Still, Maximos managed to remain alive. He stands and trembles in anger as he feels insulted. He then charged to Yak while saying that they should put an end to it this time. Yak at this moment concludes that Maximos must have been a backshot critical. Maximos prepared to attack the same as Yak. But then, before Maximos hit Yak, the Kronos Darks blocked his sword once more. Yak then grabbed the chance to run away and went behind Maximos. His eyes become red, the same as Maximos. Maximos was able to see him before he could attack. Maximos swung his sword but Yak managed to dodge. Yak was holding tight to his weapon and finally hit Maximos. Maximos slowly disappeared and admitted to himself that he was an idiot. He completely vanished and a chest then appeared. Yak was excited knowing that it was the reward of defeating Maximos. At the same time, the rebel knights attacked Yak and were startled after seeing numerous arrows. His body was trembling while carrying the chest. 
But surprisingly, the Cronon's Dark slammed the shield on the ground and a huge shield pentagram appeared and blocked all the arrows. Wow, although we performed several attacks, their defense is so strong. Yak uttered. The Cronon's Dark glanced at him and Yak believes that his pet wanted him to run away. He then ran away with the chest to go back to his tent. The night came and the Cronon's Dark was safe and went back to Yak. The pet was so excited with the chest while Yak was staring at him, believing that his pet was more helpful than he thought. He patted his pet's head and acknowledged it for doing great. He also told his pet that he had no idea that this Cronon's Dark could block Maximo's attack easily. He then opens the chest and is amazed after seeing the loot inside. It was the dragon armor. As per the system, it is rumored to be made from the scales of a dragon. The scales covering the armor boast powerful defense. This item is a set item with 12,000 durability and 400 defense. It is a rare armor and all stats of the user will rise to 40 physical attacks and 10% nullification of magic below the fourth circle of fire type. It has also an additional 100% HP recovery speed and 60% MP recovery speed. Skill Dragon's Roar is usable once a day and is only available for third job advanced or higher. Aside from this item, there is also a burning orb. A magical bomb is said to have been created by the Archmage Merlin. It turns an area into a scorched field when used. Its firepower makes it a strategic weapon and its attack power is still indeterminate. Lastly, there is also a badge of Rebel General Maximus. The proof of being a Rebel General, presenting this badge at the Royal. Yak was so happy since there were also various profitable items. For the Dragon Armor, Yak cannot wear it right away but he is very sure that he can wear it too soon. He also feels a jackpot with the Burning Orb. Since he already defeated Maximus, he concludes that he already completed the Kingdom Quest so he decides to go back to the Royal Knight. He immediately informed the Knight that he already completed the quest but the Knight didn't respond at all. Yak was checking the NPC knight, wondering why it wasn't responding at all and he even thought that there might be a bug in the game. The knight then stopped him from moving and said that Yak performed the quest very well. To discover such talent here, my judgment was not in vain. The knight stated while hugging Yak and lifting up the badge. Yak was screaming in pain due to the armor pressing against him. The knight then let go of him and said that he would like to continue subduing the rebels with Yak but he was worried that disposing of such talent wouldn't be loyal to the kingdom. He then gave the Maximo's badge to Yak and instructed Yak to go to the Kingdom Administration office to receive a reward that acknowledged his efforts. Yak was annoyed since he was expecting that he would receive the reward in this place and not in the Kingdom Administration. Still, he went to the Kingdom Administration and headed inside. While walking, he heard the people very noisy inside. He then instantly saw the admin that would give him the reward. He saw a few people who had the badges they got from different quests and he was staring at them and also wondered if the Kingdom Administration would give a lot of rewards. Since a lot of players completed some quests, he concludes that the value of the looted items might drop. As he lined up, he saw a lady staring at him. He instantly noticed the lady and he was so clueless about why the lady stared at him. With the lady's posture, he believes that she's not an NPC but a player. At this time, the man in front of Yak was scolded and told by the administration that they couldn't give rewards for such things. The man was sad and walked away while Yak was confused. He was so puzzled but the admin called his attention and asked him if he wouldn't come. Yak opened his system while saying that he cleared the rebel stronghold. The old man then asked him to take out the badge and Yak then followed his command. The old man was excited the moment he saw that the badge Yak shows belongs to Maximos. I said I would only give rewards for this kind of badge. Do you know what you need to do? The old man asked his subordinate. Is this enough to complete it? Yak asked and the old man answered yes and gave him a thumbs up. Yak then opened his system and the system notified that he had received a reward of 5,000 gold as a bounty. His royal merit increased by 2,000 and he obtained the title of Rebel Slayer. He was also granted access to the office of Royal First Knight Commander Delt. The Rebel Slayer title can be obtained when the player deals with the rebels in their territory. This title will give an additional 20 points of attack power to the player and the player earns the trust of the Royal Palace. 10% discount when using the shops affiliated with the top of the royal family. I am Royal First Knight Commander Delt. Your potential is considerable. Come back when you've grown a bit more, and I'll give you an important mission. Delt stated. Ah, yes, I understand. Yak replied and walked away. He was still checking the system and read Delt's interest. The system said that the Royal First Knight Commander Delt has taken an interest in the news that individuals who have eliminated the rebel leadership, which they couldn't do, have appeared. Delt may entrust them with an important task in the future. Below it gives Yak a quest activation condition which he needs to complete the third job advancement and find Delt again. Yak concludes that the third job advancement is at level 150 and he was eager to work hard until he reached this level. Before he could leave the kingdom, he heard Delt acknowledge another player for also bringing Maximo's badge. Yak was shocked and was very curious to know who it was. He immediately turned around and saw that it was the lady. Yak smiled as he concluded that he might possibly advance to the next job faster if he party hunted with the lady player. He comes out to the kingdom and waits for the lady outside. After a few minutes, the lady came out and he immediately greeted her. It seems like you defeated Maximos. If you received the same job quest, how about party hunting together? Yak asked. 
but then, the lady didn't give any response and casually walked away. Yak cannot believe that he got dumped by the lady. He then concludes that the lady might thought he was trying to flirt with her. He accepted it and didn't dare to chase the lady at all. The next day, Yak went to the Dark Land which is level 120 to 150 is the recommended level to fight. The mobs in this place are bandit statues and seem like more strong than the Rebel Knight Hunting Ground. This hunting ground is where the sun never sets. Although the recommended level is 120, in reality, even a level 150 user would struggle. If the player got cornered, they would be helpless and die in this land. Yak knows that it could be dangerous for his level right now but there's nowhere else for him to gain experience. I should quickly complete the third job advancement and receive the kingdom's missions. He uttered. He then asked his pet if he understood what he was saying but his pet was clueless so Yak told it to forget about what he just said. He instructed his pet to make sure to aggro the enemies like what this Kronos Dark did when they defeated Maximos and made them explode with backshot critical. He was about to say more but he was cut off when his pet jumped away and charged at the enemies. Yak was furious knowing that his pet didn't have enough knowledge yet and also didn't know that the bandit statues would be as tough as Maximos. Despite that Yak was disappointed, he didn't have a choice but to accept it since it already happened. The Kronos Dark caught the attention of all the bandit statues and they all charged to the Kronos Dark and attacked its shield. The statues hit the shield numerous times but nothing happens. The Kronos Dark remain brave, blocking the enemy's swords until they all explode. This time, Yak then charged to the enemy since this was the sign he was waiting for. After the explosion, there is still one statue remaining and is a strong one. But, Yak easily slashed it using his sword, and the statue crumbled to pieces. Yak did the same scenario every day until he reached 7th day in this land. He was fighting the statues in the scorching heat but his level only increased twice. On his 7th day, he felt tired and decided to rest for a while. The fact is that he leveled twice while his pet is now level 30. He was so exhausted and wished that he could at least take a short break now. But then, whenever his pet sees a mob, it goes crazy and instantly charges to the enemies. As his pet charged at the enemies, it instantly caught the mob's attention. Yak doesn't have any choice but to grip his sword and prepare to battle even though he doesn't think he'll be able to level up properly this time. At this time, he fought and almost ended his life but luckily defeated all the enemies and immediately drank a healing potion. As per Yak, their coordination is better than he thought. Since his pet doesn't become aggro, Yak can keep using the backshot criticals until the enemies die. All of a sudden, Yak received an alert from the system. According to the system, Yak has a heat stroke and will remain in an abnormal state for 6 hours. All his physical abilities will be reduced by 30% as a penalty and if you won't rest, the penalty and its duration will increase. Yak rattled knowing that he was now in danger. He then looks around to check if there's an area for him to set up a base camp. Yak successfully finds a place to rest and activate a bonfire even though it's scorching hot in this place. His bonfire has a blessing effect and has been activated instantly. With its help, Yak slowly recovered and his abnormal status effects will be sequentially released. If Yak and his pet had taken it easy from the beginning, Yak concludes that they wouldn't have to set up a camp in a place like this. At this time, he checked the map and noticed that they had come quite far from the boundaries of the Dark Land. With this, he becomes eager to defeat the boss knowing that he has come so far. The recommended level of defeating the boss is around 170 but with Dark by his side, he believes that he might be able to defeat the boss and gain a lot of experience. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yak uttered as he decided to search for the Dark Land in the community. He found out the last reported location by the other users and even if he will roughly walk from the area, he deduces that it will still take at least 3 days. He also feels that the spawn patterns are random so he was thinking that there might be something else they need to be careful of. Since patch 1.9581, a hidden boss called the Shrine of the Ascendant has been appearing in the Dark Land, and it's an incredibly tough opponent that even a raid party can't defeat. It was also said that this boss is twice the size of the other bosses. One thing Yak noticed is that there is no notice about the Shrine of the Ascendant on the official website. If luck is not on our side, we might encounter it in this vast field. He uttered. While thinking, his pet suddenly hopped on his back and touched him. But then, Yak was startled as it was too hot. He touched his pet and said that his whole body was like a fireball. He smiles as he believes that his pet absorbs the hot air and heat into its body. His pet possessed fire and watching his pet, he believes it was only impressed with the bonfire. At the same time, numerous statues appeared near Yak's tent and they are together with the Dark Lands boss. They were heading to the tent of Yak without Yak knowing their existence since their tent was close. Yak told his pet not to go inside the inventory but instead take a rest together with him as he believes that his Kronos Dark will only get frustrated when it goes in. While resting, Yak opens his system and recalls that the mini-map pops up when the mobs appear. For now, he could only wait until the heatstroke effect is released. The land boss was just outside and didn't dare to bother Yak. Yak sleeps comfortably together with his pet. He then wakes up after a few hours and comes out of his tent. Unfortunately, he received an alert from the system. He was startled by the sound but still came out from his tent. He was looking around and wondered why his system rang. He didn't see the boss at first as it was so tall. Still, he grabbed his pet as he was very sure that the boss was now nearby. 
He then ran while carrying his pet while his pet was still snoring. As he was running away, the boss stomped on the ground. Yak was startled and turned his head around, wondering what it was. The boss stomped on the ground once more and realized that this boss had a stealth skill which is why he didn't notice it. The boss raised its foot again and was about to stomp Yak but Yak's pet immediately jumped which rattled Yak. His pet immediately activates the shield while the boss clenches its fist and is ready to destroy the shield. The boss stomped on the shield but the shield didn't get broken. The explosion then happened and as usual, this is Yak's sign to attack. He then charged to the boss as fast as he could. He hopped from its body until he reached the boss head. He then screamed loudly while lifting up his sword. He grips tightly on his sword and hits the boss head. He was sitting on the face of the boss monster while the boss raised its hand. Yak instantly saw it and immediately jumped away so the boss ended up slapping himself. Yak on the other hand safely landed on the ground and slightly smiled. He then stood and jumped at the monster boss once more, aiming its head again. He was ready to attack the monster's head but he was dumbfounded the moment he saw his pet's shield got broken. Since he got distracted, the monster boss was able to hit him. He vomits blood and is strongly slammed on the ground. His body was trembling because of pain and his pet was staring at him while the boss foot was still stomping the shield. The boss pushed hard his foot ended up killing the Kronon's dark. Because of it, the Kronon's dark experience points have decreased. The monster boss then charged to Yak and Yak believes that he cannot handle this boss alone knowing that this boss killed his pet in one shot. He then gets a burning orb and activates it then attacks it to the monster boss. With this orb, he was able to create a flame and dealt few damage. He attacked the boss once more using orbs until the flame was very strong which made the boss unable to see him. He then seized the opportunity and ran away as fast as he could. When the flame slowly dissipated, the monster saw him and chased him. The monster boss possessed a skill and hit it on the ground. The ground crumbled and reached Yak. Yak died instantly so his level also decreased. He also has been forcefully logged out and he cannot log in within 24 hours as a penalty for death. He then removed his equipment and still managed to smile even if he felt annoyed. He regrets for not secretly running away because of his pet that aggroed him. He cannot say up until now if the Kronon's Dark is a real treasure or just junk. He stood and held his stomach as he felt hungry. He looked at the clock and realized that it was already dinner time. He then used his phone to order some checks and he is glad knowing that he still earned some gold at least before he died. After 30 minutes, his order arrived so he immediately sat in front of the television and opened a drink. He drank cola first and felt its taste which gave him much energy. While eating, he heard from the news that there's a new pet added to the legend world, and is causing a buzz. The reporter said that it was just a rumor before but was officially announced by the legend world at 2pm just this day. According to them, the new pet has no state restrictions so it has significant value as users can raise it as strongly as they want. Yak was focusing on the news and heard that the pet can be obtained through specific quests, or in the field. According to the GM's explanation, they set it so that it cannot be obtained by more than 10 players on the server. The price of the pet is worth about 1.5 billion won. As of now, there are already 10 pets released in the field, and one of them has been obtained by a specific user so there are only 9 left. Yak was still clueless and believed that this was just a way for the developer to attract new or returning users. Yak opened another cola while the reporter added that the pet cannot be traded when released so there won't be any listings either. The male reporter then declared that the name of the new pet they were referring to was the Kronos Dark. Yak didn't expect it so he unintentionally spit out his cola from his mouth. The male report added that the pet is equipped with state-of-the-art AI, so it can make its own judgments and respond actively. Yak cannot believe that the pet he was calling junk is worth 1.5 billion won. He was screaming so loud despite that it was already night since he was very surprised. He also panicked knowing that his Kronon's Dark have died but a part of him believes that it will probably resurrect. As per the newscaster, it was officially announced by the GM today and he hopes many people challenge and obtain Kronos Dark. The lady then gives an email address as they are willing to support personal broadcasts of Kronos Dark users. There will be special benefits for the player. 10 million one deposit and the player will receive 1 million one per broadcast at least once a week. Yak was speechless after calculating that he could possibly get 4 million one per month because of his Kronos Dark. He was so excited with the thoughts and he saw this opportunity as making a living. He admitted the fact that he didn't have any idea it was a treasure even if he was not allowed to sell it. Meanwhile, Yak entered the game and was resurrected in the same area in the gigantic statue. In Legend World, there is an elder master there called Sakazuna. Sakazuna is the master of life, and it is said that when life dies she guides them to the afterlife. Therefore, souls that are not guided to the afterlife are resurrected. So, the characters of the users playing Legend World are set to resurrect in front of this master statue. There won't be any GMS sending the user's character to the afterlife, that is why they are resurrected like this. He then summoned his pet and carried it since he still could not move on that this pet is worth 1.5 billion. I don't understand. I don't get it. Yak uttered which confused the Kronon's dark. Sakazuna becomes mad and orders him to go since he's now resurrected. Yak was annoyed and glanced at Sakazuna. He then remembers the monster boss, and now, he is thinking of deciding on the broadcast appearance layer, but for now, gets out of this place alive. Yak said that the way back seemed quite far but his pet pointed something behind him. 
Yak turned his head around and his pet suddenly ran fast so he didn't have a choice but to chase it and commanded it to stop since he needed to go back to the Dalant castle. The Cronon's dark didn't stop until they arrived at a cave. What's this? Why did you bring me here? Yak asked. He then checked his map on the system but discovered that this cave wasn't even marked on the map. The Cronos Dark then sprinted inside the cave so Yak becomes annoyed and cannot believe that this hard-headed pet is worth 1.5 billion. He chose to endure the behavior of his pet and head inside the cave to follow his pet. There's a stair inside the cave. Yak lit up a flame as it was too dark. He then saw his pet standing in front of a door. He was shocked when he stared at the door since the system notified him that he had discovered a new area called Rubraid's Grave. The name is familiar to him since he feels like he has heard it somewhere before. He decided to check Rubraid's information and found out that it was the Demon King who appeared in the mythology of the game Legend World. Rubraid is a creature from the underworld who gains power and becomes a Demon King, extending his power to the human world and making himself an immortal being. According to the myth, Rubraid removed the horns of the previous Demon King known as the Stone Demon King and took his place. However, it is said that a hero from the human world appeared and defeated and sealed him. And it is said that the horns, which are the source of his power, are hidden somewhere in the human world. Did you discover the grave of that Demon King? Yak asked, and his pet answered in its own words as usual. Yak then concludes that the ability to detect ancient ruins or treasures of his pet is just a basic feature. He then touched the door and planned to get inside to check it out. At the same time in the building of the legendary world game, inside the broadcasting studio, a lovely sexy lady stretches her body as she feels tired after a day of working. She then checks the clock and realizes that it's already past quitting time. Together with her inside the room is a man she addresses as Director Lee myung -guk, and she asks him if he receives a call from GM Dark, the owner of the K-Game test. But then, myung -guk answered no. The lady then said that they had already announced the payment amount during the broadcast. And if there's no news so far, she asked if it means that the game has been shut down. Since the GM side said that someone already owns it, won't they contact us, even if it's late, after watching the broadcast? myung -guk responded. They were waiting for the player who got the Cronos Dark to call them and the lady was worried thinking that the player might have already been snatched from them. She decided to forget about it for now and let myung -guk go home today and just contact Legend World by tomorrow to request the user information for the K-Game Test Dark again and also contact the Guildmaster of the Major Guilds. After myung -guk left, she leaned on her chair and she plans to go home and log into the game. As she was about to turn off her PC, she checked the calendar first and questioned herself when should she set aside time to go on a vacation. She decided to open her account on the PC as she could not stop thinking about the game even though she was not addicted. It turned out that she was the lady assassin that Yak invited to have a party together. Now, she distinct to enter the game and finds Krona's dark user herself. He then clicked her profile to log into the game instead of going home. Going back to the cave, Yak was surprised after he managed to open the door inside the cave. The room was very spacious and he instantly saw the horn of the stone demon. His pet sprinted to the horn and he rattled and gave his pet a warning to be careful. Still, his pet continued to run and there was a floor that suddenly went down the moment the Kronos Dark stomped to it. Numerous arrows then aimed at the Kronos Dark and there was also an anchor. The Kronos Dark's foot was flaming and luckily able to activate the shield to defend himself. The anchor crumbled to pieces after hitting the shield of the Kronos Dark. Yak wasn't shocked at all as he already expected traps in this kind of spacious place. What makes him surprised is seeing his pet trigger the aggro from all the traps. He still told his pet to be careful as he wasn't sure that there was no trap anymore. He then started walking and followed his pet until they reached the horn. Yak then touched the horn, believing that this item has such strong magical power that can be compatible with any role like DPS, tank, healer, or using any weapons. He was also sure that this item was made of incredibly expensive high-quality materials. Yak hasn't seen anyone actually using equip, and made from these materials, whether in a game or on a broadcast which is why he got excited. He was ready to grab the horn, hoping that there were no traps anymore. He successfully carried it and he was glad that there was no trap. He decided to put the horn in his inventory and told the Cronos Dark that they should now get out of this cave quickly. But then, after trying to put the horn in his inventory, the system alerted him that the weight and size of the horn exceeded the limit and could not be placed in the inventory so he didn't have a choice but to carry this heavy horn all the way back through the Dark Shadowlands. He dragged the horn by putting it in his cape while he was walking. He was panting heavily while pulling the cape and he got annoyed upon hearing that his pet was just singing instead of helping him. He tried his best to pull the cape but he suddenly tossed it and sat on the ground. He fans himself with his hand while complaining that his stamina is about to run out. In the end, he decided not to carry the horn anymore and just walked on his own. He stares at the horn, wondering why he can't put the horn in his inventory even though it's still an item after all. All of a sudden, his pet grabbed the horn and lifted it up easily. Yak was so mad upon knowing that his pet could carry the horn the whole time but chose to let him suffer for so long. He scolded his pet but his pet dashed away from him. But unfortunately, after just a minute, the Cronod's dark trembled and flopped on the ground. 
Yak was so disappointed but this is what he expected to happen since the horn was really too heavy. They weren't halfway their way and Yak already concluded that they couldn't keep doing like this, especially when they didn't even know if the demon god's statue would show up again. Plus, other enemy characters might ambush them. As they continued to walk, Yak heard a noise behind him. He turned his head around and saw a man carrying a cart with several boxes. Yak was glad knowing that this guy was also a player. The guy also noticed him and Yak then asked him where he was heading. The guy then answered that he was on his way to Tarrant to sell some goods from Shiro. That's great. Is there any chance you'd be willing to load our item on your cart as well? Yak asked, and the guy asked where his item at. Yak then pointed to the horn behind him and asked the man if he could help him take it to the warehouse keeper of the Tarrant castle. The man then went to the horn and used a magnifying glass to check the legibility of the item. After a few seconds of checking, he then discovered that this red huge horn was the Stone Demon King's horn. Please don't log out or attack us after I load it. It would really help me out, Yak said, and the guy then told him that he shouldn't ask for help if he's worried about something like what he said. Yak pleaded and told him that he'd pay in gold. It's fine, I've been playing as a merchant since I got bored after maxing out my level. Hurry up and load it, the guy replied. Yak carried the horn and gave thanks to him. One thing the guy also noticed is Yak's pet. He asked if this pet was a Gigantes Dark. Yak answered yes and the guy surprisingly dashed to the pet with excitement while saying that it was his first time seeing this kind of pet in person. I want it but you can't exchange it, can you? The guy said. Yak then told him that it was an heirloom pet, but deep inside him, he believed the pet might be stolen from him because even the max level player wanted this pet. The guy went back to his cart and searched for something to give to the Kronoths to pay for his cuteness. After finding it, he then handed it to the Kronoths. It's a black round shield that is very perfect for his size. Yak was amazed upon seeing this item that was given by the guy for free. The Kronoths at the same was hopping and bouncing because of his happiness for receiving the shield. As per the guy, this shield's physical and magical defense stats will be much more better than with the ones Yak was using. Yak just stared at them and he was so jealous of his pet. He also believes that his max level player is surely generous. The three of them then started leaving while the guy mentioned that he knows a path where mob characters won't show up so he wants Yak to just follow the cart and never be distracted. Meanwhile, they finally arrived at their destination. The cart stopped and Yak then bowed down and gave thanks to the guy to show his appreciation. Don't mention it. Helping a newbie out is the duty of a pro gamer after all, the guy replied. But Yak was confused and he felt insulted since he's not a newbie anymore but is almost at level 140. The guy ignored what he said and only bid goodbye to the Kronots. After it, Yak approached the warehouse owner to say that he wanted to store an item. The owner crossed his arms and asked what item it was. Yak extended his hand and said that it would be the horn. But then, the owner ordered him to leave as they couldn't store anything like this horn in their warehouse. Yak was confused as to why and the owner explained that the magical energy of this horn is so strong that it could damage their other customers' goods if they store it. Yak was shocked upon knowing it. He begged the owner to make an exception but the owner blocked him and refused to give an exception since he didn't want the other goods to be damaged just because of just one item which is the horn. Yak was already crying while begging, saying that he couldn't do anything with this horn right now. That's your problem. Why can't you just take no for an answer? The owner replied, and he warned Yak to call the guards if he kept being so insistent. The guards glared at him so he sighed and accepted the fact that he couldn't store it in the warehouse. He was worried knowing that this horn was a pain in his neck, besides, he couldn't just throw away such high quality material either. He then walked away but there were men who noticed his pet. He wasn't aware of the men as he was focusing on thinking what he should do with the horn. In the end, he decided to take the horn to Pants right away and have him make equipment out of it since he believed it was the only solution. As he arrived at Pants's place, Pants asked him where he got the horn. Pants cannot believe that Yak dragged something so precious all the way to him. I had no choice. It wouldn't fit in my inventory, and the warehouse wouldn't take it either. I barely managed to get it back to the castle with the help of a kind-hearted max-level player. Yak replied. Pants then said that he doesn't know who's the player who helped Yak but he concludes that the guy surely wasn't being kind. He believes that the guy only knew that there was no point in having this horn. Yak was confused so Pants explained that this horn breaks the wrist of nearly every blacksmith who tries to handle it, and it's a very nasty item. He was sure that the guy who helped Yak knew it'd be difficult to deal with this so they didn't want it to begin with. The same goes for you, though. Why don't you sell this to me for a million gold? He added, and with this huge amount, Yak was surprised and tempted knowing that this amount would be a hundred million one in the real world. Pants then said that he was the only one who would pay Yak so handsomely and if Yak went somewhere else, he was sure no one would give him more than a million gold. Yak then smiled as he realized something. The fact that Pants wants to buy the horn for a million gold means to him that the item is worth more than a million gold. Pants laughed and said that he thought Yak was just a dummy but it turned out that he was sharper than he thought. 
Tell me the truth. How much can I get for this? If I ask for 3 million gold, will you pay it? Yak asks, and Pants then concludes that Yak really doesn't have any idea how nasty the Stone Demon King's horn is. Who are you trying to bargain with? Pants asked. Fine, then, I'll just go look for another blacksmith. Yak replied. Pants cried and asked Yak if he could pay for the expenses if he would make equipment out of it. Yak then questioned him how much it would cost to make one. Pants raises his hand and Yak then concludes that it's 500 gold which sounds easy enough for him. But then, Pants shook his head and moved his hand. Yak thought that it would be 50,000 gold. Still, Pants shook his head again and still raised his hand. This time, Yak said 500,000 is so ridiculous. 5 million gold. It cost 5 million. Pants screamed with shock Yak since it was too expensive. Pants laughed and said it was just a rough estimate and he asked Yak if he would pay for it. Yak didn't give an answer so Pants concluded that he was hesitant. Pants then told him that he shouldn't be hesitant since no one would accept the horn from him. Yak then planned to put it on sale but Pants said there would be a 10% commission fee. Yak then replied that he was willing to pay for it. And as per Pants, Yak has to exchange it directly since he can't store it in a warehouse, which means the buyer could kill him and steal the item. What if we exchange it in front of a guard? Yak asked, and Pants responded, why go through all of that? You can just save yourself the trouble and hand me a million gold. But then, Yak got the feeling that Pants was trying to rip him off. How dare you? I'm the best blacksmith in the Tarrant Castle who deals only with the best and most trustworthy quality. Pants angrily screamed. Because of his loud voice, Yak's pet was startled. Pants then added that Yak could trust him with the item and he promised to make sure Yak gets his money's worth. Yak then checked his system and found out that the exact price for the Stone Demon King's horn wasn't up yet, but it was exchanged for 4.89 million gold on the market. He winked at Pants then and told him that he decided to just sell the item to Pants for 4 million gold. Pants was mad and he asked to lower the price and make it 1.5 million gold instead. Yak said 3.99 million and Pants said 2 million. Still, Yak wanted to stick to 4 million so he said the last price would be 3.98 million. Pants crossed his arms and he was grumbling and decided not to take the Stone Demon King's horn anymore and let Yak sell it somewhere else. Yak knew that Pants was just tricking him so he turned around and agreed to Pants' suggestion. But as he declared that he would really sell it somewhere else, Pants grabbed him and said that he was so impatient. He laughed and admitted that he lost his temper. He also told Yak that 2 million gold isn't too bad, especially since Yak is a dark game so he needs to earn a living. Last year, the Stone Demon King's horn sold for nearly 5 million gold on the market, so Yak believes that it's probably not a lie that it costs around that much to make the armor. But if he accounts for the margin and stuff like that, he concludes Pants would still earn at least a couple million. And seeing how Pants stopped him from leaving makes him think that the horn is really worth a lot. He also believes this would be his chance to strike it rich. Very well. Then please make the armor for me. I'll pay for all the expenses. He suddenly said while pointing to himself. You, you don't look like you have that kind of money. Pants replied, which made Yak feel that there was a rock falling on his head. He awkwardly laughed and mentioned once again that Pants said earlier it's possible to make armor from Stone Demon King's horn for 5 million gold. Pants said it is really possible but it only covers the cost of processing the material, and there would be the cost of labor and other things that would cost another 7 to 8 million gold. Yak then promised to pay him 7 million gold for all the hard work of Pants but there would be one condition. Pants asked what it was, and as per Yak, he didn't have that much money right now so he would pay in installments. Pants doesn't like Yak's condition but Yak told him that he'll be earning 7 million gold either way and that he will keep bringing money until he reaches the amount. Pants was hesitant since he had never made a deal like this before. Yak then explained to him that he should make the armor from the Stone Demon King's horn while he just needed to keep paying off the fee until it reached 7 million. Pants thought about it for a moment and he uttered that Yak's condition didn't sound like a bad deal, and Yak said of course, and told him that there was no point in him running away since this is a game after all. At this moment, Pants accepted the deal and they both shook hands. After it, Yak declared that he had one more condition. Pants was annoyed as he thought everything was now good. Still, he asked Yak what condition it was now. As per Yak, he needs to do more XP farming to pay Pants faster, and to do that, he needs better gear since the one he had is almost broken. You're weirdly logical, aren't you? How irritating. Pants said. Yak pointed at the weapon behind him. This weapon was huge, it was sparkling and very clean. And Yak wanted to borrow this weapon. Despite that Pants is annoyed, he still agrees to Yak so that Yak can really pay him faster once he grows stronger. He told Yak to wait for a moment and Yak was so happy since there was no need to beg for Pants. After a minute, Pants came back with a contract. He told Yak that he must sign the contract and the cost will be calculated each month. In addition, the gold will be automatically transferred to him. The contract written is from number 1 to 10. Yak reads the contract and he is disappointed thinking that this contract Pants made is practically a slave contract. 
He believes that it may be because an expensive item is on the line. He also concludes that Pants is also trying to get Rich to aside from him. While he is reading it, Pants gets the weapon while telling Yak to sign the contract immediately and not be hesitant if he already made up his mind. Yak agreed and realized that the contract is reasonable enough so he then signed it with his name written below the contract. After signing it, his system window appeared to be notified that an automatic transfer had been set. Every month, 30% of his gold from his income will now be sent to Pants, chairman of the Artisan Union. Pants then handed the weapon to him and wished him good luck in farming. Yak grabbed the weapon from Pants and another notification appeared stating that this weapon was the demigod's greatsword. According to the legend passed down from long ago, a sword god used this greatsword to fly around. A mysterious aura surrounds it and it boasts an outstanding performance despite being made many many years ago. This sword's rank is unique and it has 15,000 durability, 2,130 strength, plus 100 points on all skills, an additional 10% attack speed, an additional 100 points HP recovery speed, an additional 50% attack power on undead, and can use the skill flying sword once a day. Also, it has usage restrictions, that is it cannot be used by mage type classes. Pants this time asked Yak to move the horn together, but then, they suddenly heard a noise and Pants then finally noticed Yak's pet. He was surprised upon seeing it, and Yak was shocked that Pants just noticed it. He also informed Pants that the pet came from the quest Pants gave to him that he completed. Pants hugged the pet and squeezed it while saying that he had always wanted to give one of these little things a huge. The stone demon king's horn and a gigantic dark. Just who are you? Pants asked while staring at Yak. Yak was sweating. He was scratching his cheek as he answered that it might be just lucky. But then as per Pants, it's not just luck but would surely be a destiny because of the luck that his pet had. After talking about the pet, they then resumed moving the horn. Pants gets some of his tools while mentioning that there's a thief breaking into the forage so he thinks it's best to work on it in his home. Yak was confused and Pants then informed him that there was an assassin class player who got caught trying to steal from the forge. Yak was disappointed thinking that the freedom of this game goes beyond what he imagined. According to Pants, that player was supposed to stop by the forge to discuss how to make it up to him. While he was talking, someone knocked on the door and instantly opened it without asking permission. Are you home, sir? I'm here to talk about yesterday, the lady visitor said. She continued to speak but she caught Yak's attention. Yak at the same time also remembered that he already saw this lady with the delt. Do you know each other? A thief and a swindler do. Pants said, hey, who are you calling a swindler? Yak angrily shouted. The lady on the other hand was uncomfortable. She's Harin, an assassin who refused to be wooed. His first impression of Yak is that he seems like an awkward playboy because of the way he keeps looking at her. And for Yak, he's a loser who wishes he could score a date online. As far as he can see, Harin really looked stuck up. Miss Harin, you know that if the authorities find out you tried to steal from here, you'll lose your title of Rebel Slayer, right? Pants said. The lady held his hoodie and removed it from her hair. She then told Pants that she was here to apologize for causing trouble and make it up to Pants. Pants then asked what she could do for him, and the lady became serious and replied that she could kill someone for him. Yak suddenly asked Pants if he could now go since he already signed the contract. Pants then told him to wait outside. He then headed outside while carrying the horn and passed through the lady. Harin continues to speak while staring at Yak leaving. Then she saw the gigantic dark chronos which surprised her the most. The gigantic dark is following Yak, and at this moment, Yak feels a bad feeling about the lady. Meanwhile, Pants let Yak go to his place. He was so amazed with the view which he believes is a perfect place to relax. Harin was also with them and she was carrying the gigantic dark. According to Pants, he spent his entire life on the battlefield and now he has a humble life with his pastime. So for him, he deserves this small luxury. Yak on the other hand concludes that Pants seemed to be excited about the stone demon king's horn. Also, he wondered why Harin was with them. Harin looked so unamused. Pants at the same time explained to Yak that Harin told him she would do anything to make amends so he told her to support Yak by his side until Yak pays him back, and Harin agreed to it in an instant. Shouldn't you ask for my opinion as well? Yak said, all I need from you is money. Do you understand what I mean? Pants replied. He then waved his hand ordering Yak to stop whining and bring the horn inside his home. Because of it, Yak agreed that the contract was really a slave contract. They entered the house of Pants and inside it was shimmering and was very clean. Yak's eyes sparkled while saying that there's really a lot of freedom in the game. Pants handed a piece of paper to Yak and ordered to bring back these items to him. Yak put down the horn and accepted the paper. A notification then appeared saying that Yak needed to go to the Soul Merchant Guildmaster to get the hammer that carries a dwarf's soul, the wrathful blacksmith's apron, and the angel's silver. Yak asked Pants what about all of these items, and according to Pants, everything is a demon king's item, and in order to handle it, they need power from the heavens and ingredients from the human world. 
If he made armor without these things, he was sure enough that the user would be overtaken by the armor. That is the reason why it costs so much and takes such a long time to make. Payance added that once Yak finds the Saul Merchant Guild, they'll provide all the materials he needs. He also reminded Yak that it won't be for free. Yak groaned while recalling where he heard the Saul Merchant Guild. After a minute, he remembered that it was the biggest merchant guild on the continent so he couldn't think of a way on how he could meet the Grandmaster. Pants then told him that he would be able to meet the Grandmaster once he mentioned Pants's name since Pants was the chairman of the Artisans' Union. He then laughed and added that it would be hard to even say his name to anyone in the first place. After discussion, Yak immediately went to the Tarrant Castle to complete the demand of Pants. Of course, he's together with Harin. As they enter, Yak is wondering how he could find the Saul Merchant Guild. He asked Harin but then Harin didn't know its whereabouts. She only knew that the guildmaster was someone named Saul. I could have guessed that from its name too, you know. Yak replied. The lady turned around and said that Yak is so boring and useless and is definitely a loser who has no friends. Yak overheard her and he was so annoyed while telling the lady to repeat what she said. But then, a cart suddenly crashed nearby. The people were nervous and said that there were bandits. Two bandits were running away while the guards were asking them to stop. Surprisingly, the guy who helped Yak bring the horn to the castle was the victim of the bandits. He was sitting on the ground and Yak was shocked upon seeing him. He then excused to everyone so he could pass and go to the guy. He called him by the name Money and asked him what happened. Money instantly recognized him, and he explained that he was in the middle of a trade quest when some bandit NPCs ambushed him and stole his goods. Bandit NPCs. You're at max level and you lost to a mere bandit NPCs. Yak asked in confusion. Money then said that he may be maxed out but he gained experience through trading, plus he can't use his skills when he's pushing the cart. Yak concludes that the stolen items of money are surely valuable items, and Money then says yes since they belong to the Saul Merchant Guild. That's all for today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 2000 likes. Please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Until next time.